Hello and welcome to the 2024 Southland Baseball Season Previews. And I'm joined right now by head coach Ryan Schotzberger and Isaiah Zavala from UIW. Coach Isaiah, how are you guys doing today? Doing good, doing good. Good, glad we're here. Awesome. Well, really excited to get to chat with you as we get so close now to the 2024 season kicking off. Um, coach, a very successful season in many ways last year, second in the Southland in a regular season, but I know the tournament didn't go exactly how you wanted it to. Um, what would you put that down to and how do you use that as motivation for 2024? Yeah, I think last year was we had a great group of kids that, that were veteran, um, you know, in college baseball now, you want to get old and stay old. Well, we were able to get old and then had three years with that group. Um, so it was, I think there was more 23 and 24 year olds on that team than there were 19 and 20 year olds. Um, and not only were they older, they had a ton of at bats. I mean, we have guys that were, I think we have three of the top five all time hitters that were on that team last year. Um, ERA records, innings records, just a lot of guys with a lot of experience. Um, and then we were able to blend in the the um, the guys around them, kind of the newer, younger guys, um, to to have big roles for us. So it was a really good group that was player led, and that was a big thing that we talked about all the time. The best teams are player led, not coach fed. And that group showed up every day and, and liked to compete. Um, they kind of knew how to go about playing the games, which which was which showed up when when it was game time. Isaiah, coach talking there, obviously, about, you know, player-led teams, and you're obviously one of the leaders uh, from the mound for this team. So as you look back at 2023, what did you learn that you can use here in 2024? I think just building the team chemistry overall is huge for this new team, um, whether it's hanging out, you know, watching games on the weekend or uh, even going golfing with each other, just getting to know each other, where each other come from, uh, their background, stuff like that. Because once you get to know one another, then it's easier to play for them as well. And and Isaiah, you know, you're obviously a local a local product, right? Hometown boy there in San Antonio. So how how proud does it make you to be able to represent an institution from the same city that you grew up in? It makes me very proud. It's nice to be, you know, close to home, having home in my backyard. I just like uh, overall the just the morale of the campus and being able to be, stay close to my family. Awesome. Coach, Isaiah touched a little bit there on kind of team building. And obviously we know the cyclical nature of college athletics. You've already said that staying old is what you want, but obviously there's always newcomers within each roster each year. So how have you gone about tailoring the roster this year to replace some of those that you lost at the end of last season? Yeah, you know, we kind of went out and got a bunch of transfers. Um, we have one freshman and I think we have 20 something transfers. Um, so again, we lose a bunch of older guys. We got to go get older guys because college baseball now is basically, if you think about it in a select baseball age frame, it's from 12 U to 18 U. So if you have a bunch of 12 year olds playing 18 year olds, it's not going to go well for you. So we went out and got older. Um, I think we're more physical, um, this year, just, um, across the board, pitchers, hitters, we've added some more depth. Um, we have competition as we go. I mean, I can, honestly sit here and tell you right now, I think I know one position on the field that that's going to be filled. Um, and obviously he's going to pitch on a weekend. Just don't know what day yet. Um, so I guess that's two, but it's been getting them in here and getting them to play. Uh, we've played, you know, we played over 240 innings in the fall and we've played over almost a hundred innings so far this spring, just playing games. Um, getting them in the mindset of, you know, the world treats winners different than losers. Um, so trying to get these guys to understand what it takes to be a winner and whether it's um, inner squads or sim games or two pitch games or whatever it may be, there's, we're always at the end of practice or the entire practice, it's, it's a competition and it's a game. So trying to build that first, um, getting a group that doesn't like to lose, that just likes to go out and, and play as hard as they can, as long as they can is a, is a big piece of what we do. And speaking of being a winner and not liking to lose, you know, Isaiah, last year you had a six and one record across your 10 starts, which is a fantastic return for any starting pitcher. Um, how do you feel last year went and, and what allowed you to be so successful with your innings? I think just the work in the offseason with Coach Schatz, as well as our old pitching coach, Coach Simons, um, it really came to light during the season. 
uh, just countless hours working on different pitches. And the big thing for me was just staying locked in mentally, getting the mental side of the game down and just going out there and competing, you know, just having the mentality that I'm better than you and I'm going to get you out. That's what really helped me. And do you think that's a mentality that's shared, not just through the pitching staff, but this team on the whole as you approach 2024? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, just going out there and letting the other letting my teammates, you know, see that it's possible to have a good mentality when you're out there and that it helps. Coach, is that type of mentality something you're looking for in, in bringing these transfers in that you've just spoken about? 100 percent. And, you know, they they've got to come in here with an edge to them. We talk about it all the time. I want you to practice and play with an edge to you. Um, you know, especially where we are, we're getting a lot of guys that have been told somewhere else that you're not going to play here. So they're coming in here. So my job and our staff's job is to get them confident again and getting them confident and, and then letting them go play. Um, you know, Zavala is kind of the oddity now in college baseball. He's been at UIW every day that I've been at UIW. Um, he's a fifth year guy. Um, and, and it's, he's kind of rare now. And, and believe me, I appreciate the heck that he's still here. Um, but relying on guys like him that have been with me every day to grab a, to grab a kid and go, Hey, this is why we're doing this, or, Hey, this isn't going to cut it here. This is what we have to do to where I can continue to work on the, the entire team and he can get a one-off guy or, you know, Ray Mendoza came in last year, um, had a great season. Um, there's a bunch of guys kind of around the field that can grab a guy and say, okay, Hey, this is how we do things. Um, instead of, constantly the message coming from the head coach because I think the message gets lost when it's constantly coming from the head coach. I can completely understand that and as you look to try and build on the successes of last year we already touched on finishing second in the Southland regular season. Um, how tough is that going to be to repeat or attempt to try and get that number one seed this time around? Yeah I think it's going to be extremely difficult. I think the league is very balanced. I, I, I don't know a whole lot about all the other teams. Um, but I know if you look at last year's standings, we went into the last game of the year. We won, we finished second. Had we lost, we'd have finished seventh. And if we won, we won and we were one game out of first place. So there's no separation. And, you know, you can go, a lot of it depends on where your road trips end up. You know, if you get a different draw for road trips and, you know, if you play out here and the wind's blowing a certain way, it's a whole lot harder to play than if it's if you're at another field and the wind's blowing a different direction there. So there's a lot of things that, that go into it, but the league is very balanced. I think we have a really good group of teams, really good group of coaches um, that, that are really good at what they do. And it's a very balanced league. So it's the little details that are going to win you a game or lose you a game. Because if you looked across the league, I don't think there was – I think there was like four sweeps the entire season. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think it's, it's not very many. Um, and it's hard to sweep a team. It's hard to sweep a team. I mean, last year we went down to, uh, Southeastern and they hammered us the first game. And then we came back and won the second two, you know, we won the sec, the first two, I think three times or four times in a weekend and lost the last one. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but it's a very balanced league. Um, and there's a lot of things that, we're still trying to figure out. And I think that's what the non-conference is for, for all of our teams, not just us, but to try to figure out the right rotation, the right lineup, the right mix to where you go into the, go into conference ready to roll. And as you kind of build this schedule, obviously we're approaching the start of the season now with Villanova coming to town in just a few days. Um, you've obviously got a ton of big names on it, right? We're going to A&M, to Texas, a series at Baylor, um, was that a deliberate attempt to try and test yourselves against the best within this kind of South region in Texas and Louisiana? Yeah, I think, you know, putting the schedule together here, especially in the state of Texas, there's not a whole lot of schools that are like us, um, you know, small uh, Catholic schools. So being able to get a Villanova um, that has the big name notoriety, mainly because of basketball, um, to come down here and play us is huge because it's a similar school. So you're, 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 basically apples to apples there. But a lot of these guys came here because we do play A&M, we do play Texas, and we do play Baylor. We've played TCU in the past, Houston in the past. We've played all those guys. Um, and we're not going to shy away from, from it in the future. But, you know, we played Texas twice, I believe, last year. Um, we played them for a three-game series the year before. 
I think in order to to prepare yourself for a regional setting and a, a, a environment that's different than what we create, we have to be in that environment before it matters. So taking these guys to Texas and taking them to A&M, uh, taking them to Baylor where there's a lot more people and it's noise and it's loud and getting them to understand that the environment is the only thing that changed. You know, I, it's, it's like Hoosiers, you know, the foul line is still the same distance, the mound's still the same distance, all that, but the environment gets people to do things that are different. So um, no, I, I'm a huge fan of playing those games. Um, plus for us, Texas is pretty close. You know, um, I guess it'd be like McNeese playing LSU and those guys. So, um, but I think these guys like to play those games. They get excited to go. Um, so that's why we keep doing it. And Isaiah, obviously coach has mentioned you being there kind of with him throughout this whole journey at UIW going into your fifth year. So what would it mean to you and the other members of that senior class to be able to cap your career with a championship in Hammond, Louisiana at the Southland Conference Tournament in May? I mean, it would mean the absolute world to me just knowing that all the hard work from the past uh, four previous years have finally, you know, paid off. Um, the reason I've stayed here is to bring the first conference championship to UIW, and it would just be an honor. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you down there very shortly. And just lastly, Isaiah, I want to kind of just take us inside the locker room for a couple of seconds and get to know a couple of your teammates a little bit better. So... You know, there's there's long days in the dugout and there's there's often the need for entertainment. So who's the best dancer on the team? When the music's blaring, who's the one who can really get the crowd going? And equally, who's maybe not so good with their moves? Uh, that's, that's a tough question. Um, The best dancer, in my opinion, I'd probably say Dalton Beck. Got some pretty good moves. And then the worst... I don't know. I've seen our freshman AJ Herrera try to dance, and it's pretty bad. Corner's so, got to be up there. Corner doesn't really dance. Oh, okay, he's a little shy. Well, I guess that's that's AJ's uh, note to try and improve that throughout the season, so that he can do a celebratory dance at the championship <laughs> in May. Um, guys, Coach Isaiah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's been great to get to chat with all you, all things UIW baseball, and we'll look forward to seeing you very shortly here in 2024. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it.